My name is Rachel Scanlon. I'm here at Nether Hall School doing a project that combines art and science. We've been here for about five weeks so far and we've been looking at different art forms, different sciences, using sensory play to explore art and science together. So this project is art and science and I've been lucky enough to work with a chemistry student, Asthma. Um, and it's not really like white lab coats and test tubes, it's using chemistry that we find in the world around us every day. So it's kind of exploring our world, using that in a sensory way and sort of playing with it. Um, it's really important for children in a school like this to experience chemistry and art and science in the way we're delivering it because it's really exploring it through a hands-on way that they can access. Um, it's not about the product at the end of it, it's about the process. It's really child-led. We see what they do and we can bring in something the next week that adds on to that and builds on that. So it's building their experiences. And some people assume children in a school like this couldn't do chemistry, but it's actually it's beyond that, you know, that they're doing it. We're watching them do it, we can see their reactions and their engagement. There's um, a very mixed ability at the school, um, a whole spectrum of abilities. And it's been really interesting working with higher ability, going into the science background of some of these projects and then taking the thing that we made, such as the lava lamp, into a different class and just showing them the product and just seeing the fascination on their faces. So there's loads of different access points for the children to sort of get into this subject and see what's happening and experience it in different ways. So I think one of the really great things about this residency is the inclusion of asthma as a, a chemist, uh, you know, collaborating with Rachel on this programme and giving those young people the experience of meeting somebody that's not just a stereotypical character in a lab coat, but a real life person. And you know, that's what this kind of collaborative approach is all about. The artist, the teacher, the young people, the university as a business, you know, that whole community around a young person working collaboratively. And it really embodies that, that Reggio approach, that collaboration that is so important in what we're doing with the Sensory Atelier programme. I mean, you know, it's, it's where the magic happens, really. I think as teachers, sometimes we are reserved because we feel that students don't like this, they're not going to respond well to it. So we're scared as teachers to try those new things. And I think having someone else come in and uh, see that has maybe th made us realise actually we need to try these approaches with them even though they like structure and we need structure, it's okay to let them have that little bit of freedom. Well, I think for, again, for my class, they are quite uh, diverse ability, um, but for our most able, the science aspect of it has been really, uh, really beneficial. But then for the more sensory students, the, the, those elements have been there as well. And it, they have, they've had autonomy, really. They've had, you know, they've made their own designs, they've chosen their own colours, you know, they've done the countdowns. It's just been, it's just been, it's just been really good to engage from our top end to our most sensory and, and it's really worked. So it was seeing the expression on their face, their eyes lighting up, them using their hands because we have some students that won't use their hands you know so doing that sensory exploration you know using all the different materials and it was just so nice you know they were fully engaged and um, we have a student um, that won't even sit for 15 minutes, you know, so to have her sitting there for like nearly enough 40, 45 minutes, that was really good. The sensory part of it as well, you know, like the smells and the textures, um, that helps them with exploring. The exploring is a big part for PMLD students um, and keeping them engaged keeping them engaged for as long as possible and we're finding the more they they're doing this lesson the longer they're engaged for so it's like getting you know they're getting more from it each time they do this the different items that Rachel brings into the classroom seem to be very household based but also we've stolen some of her ideas her um, lava lamp creations um, our students really interacted with those so we've now chose to make them um, separate to Rachel so they can use them in their own choosing time. Having Rachel in almost gives us a little bit of an excuse. It gives us an excuse to try new things. It gives us an excuse to look at things differently. Um, and it gives us an excuse to think of our own ideas of where we might want to go forward with them. I know from um, the class teacher in one of the sessions, 
it's made her think about something that she previously really liked enjoy, um, teaching and enjoyed teaching about bringing it forward now even when Rachel's not been in she's still led the session in in that way because it's something that she's found's worked it's brought her enjoyment in that element out again so I think it has given us a, a massive excuse to try these things. It's really important for students at a school like this to, to see that it's being led by them because they are important people. They often don't have a voice outside of school or outside of these sort of settings and it's really important that they see that their interest is swaying this project. It's completely down to them as what we're doing. We're watching them, they're getting involved and really enjoying the experience and having their chance to shine. <laughs>